Hello my loves and welcome to today's oil painting time lapse and studio sessions episode 40. Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace, which is what I've been using for the past four years to build and host my website and online shop. I absolutely love them and I'm so honored to bring you guys this special offer. So whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. Start your free trial today at squarespace.com and visit squarespace.com slash happydartist to get 10% off your first purchase. Also, I just wanted to quickly remind you guys that I'm having a meetup very soon, June 14th in Denver, Colorado. It's going to be at Sally Centigrade Gallery for the grand opening of my solo show there. I'll also be attending Denver Comic Con that weekend, June 15th and June 16th, and we'll be doing signings those two days as well. We're also going to be doing a quick giveaway of two free passes to Denver Comic Con for Friday, June 15th. And I'm going to be listing all of the information for the meetups and the giveaway on the screen and in the description below. So hopefully I can meet some of you guys there. Also, I will be listing all of the art supplies used in today's video along with links to purchase them in the description below. Okay, now that we got all of the announcements out of the way, it's finally time for the painting portion of this video. This piece was actually the very first piece I created for my solo show. It measures 16 by 20 inches and it was one of the most difficult and challenging pieces I had ever done just due to the sheer amount of details I had to incorporate. And also, I don't know if you guys know this about me, but I'm not really used to working with larger surfaces. I usually stay kind of in the 11 by 14 or 8 by 10 range. That's just where I'm the most comfortable. So for this piece, I went up to 16 by 20 and it just took me so long to try to get the composition right. And anyways, all in all, I'm really happy with the result. I think the hard work paid off, but it was definitely a very challenging journey. And for this solo show, I actually recorded every single oil painting I made. I don't think I've ever done this before for any of my previous shows. Um, I usually like to just give myself the freedom to relax a little bit and not have to record every single piece. But for this show, I don't know, I just thought it was too special to not document. So I'm really excited to be sharing future videos with you guys for the other six pieces as well. And I'm really sorry I've been a little bit MIA on YouTube in the past few weeks. Um, I won't get into the details now. There's going to be an announcement video coming up very soon where I tell you guys exactly why I have been so inactive on social media. Um, basically, to make a long story short, it's just been super, super busy and I've been having a lot on my plate. Um, luckily, things have kind of settled down and I'm able to relax now and put more time into editing my videos and finally doing something with all that footage that I had recorded. But yeah, preparing for a solo show is not easy, you guys. Um, I have been tested probably more than I have ever been for any show. And all in all, I'm just really glad that I made it out alive, even though you know I lost a lot of sleep and was really stressed and panicked at times. Um, I'm just glad things are better now. But there are definitely times during the process of trying to complete the show and manage my time where I kind of ask myself, you know, why am I doing this to myself? Um, you know, my pieces now are taking way longer than they ever have, um, you know, based on just my recorded time lapse footage. I can tell that I now spend double, sometimes triple the amount of time that I used to spend trying to finish a piece. And I don't think it's because I'm slower than I used to be. Um, I know for sure the reason is because my standards have gone way up and my bar for myself has gone way up. So maybe in the past I would consider a painting finished a lot earlier on, but now I kind of almost force myself to continue polishing it and you know, adding final touches and fixing things until I'm satisfied. And I guess now I'm just r way harder to um, satisfy than I was before. And a painting never looks complete to me anymore. I just keep adding to it. So things have been taking me so much longer. I'm so much more emotionally invested. I'm so much more hard on myself when things don't go right. And yeah, it's just getting harder and harder, I think, to manage the time and try to balance everything. But 
yeah, it's it kind of made me wonder, you know, why do I do this to myself? Why don't I just, I don't know, chill a little bit or don't say yes to so many things or don't push myself so hard? And it got me thinking about kind of why artists choose this lifestyle to begin with. You know, when I first gave up my job to try to do the artist thing, I had so many people who asked me out of genuine concern and curiosity, you know, why would you trade financial security to pursue a career that you know nothing about, that is known to be high risk and, you know, filled with adversity and basically the whole world working against you. And at the time, I almost couldn't articulate the best answer other than I don't feel like I had a choice. Like it wasn't, it almost wasn't like this conscious decision that I made on my own after evaluating all the options. It just felt like it was a calling and it's something I couldn't deny and couldn't resist. And over time, I think as I became an artist and went through the the ins and outs and the day to day kind of errands, ups and downs of being an artist, I realized that a lot of people who are in the creative field, they don't do this because they logically decided this was the best path. They do this because it's almost like their destiny. Um, you know, you like all of the all of the suffering or the struggle that you have to go through is worth it because if you were to do anything else, the suffering and the tragedy of not following your path and not answering your calling is so much worse. And I realized that the day-to-day -day small pains of dealing with stress or feeling overworked or dealing with small failures or you know the occasional negative feedback on social media is so trivial compared to the huge pain of not doing something that I know I was meant to do or I know that I was born to do in a way. Um, I don't know, it's, it's so hard to explain, but I just feel like I'm way happier dealing with the uncertainty, dealing with the occasional stress or hurdles of being an artist than I ever would be with a very comfortable, safe life where I didn't have a lot of risk. And I feel like a lot of other creative people out there probably feel the same way. And of course, if you guys feel the same way, um, please let me know. I love hearing your stories and hearing your outlooks as well. You know, it's almost kind of like a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing to know exactly what you want to do and to be able to kind of very clearly articulate that need in yourself because you can't really fulfill your need unless you recognize it and identify it first. So in that way, I feel like it is a blessing. It's a gift to be able to love something that much and to have something bring you so much joy and something that never gets old, that never gets tiring, that never gets boring. Um, but it's also a curse because you're kind of bound to it forever. Like, I just think that no matter how old I get or where I go or who I'm with or what kind of family I have, um, art will always be a priority. and. Sometimes, you know, it's a good thing that I have this almost like one true love in my life. And sometimes I feel kind of bad because I'm unable to prioritize anything else, no matter how much I want to, you know, like even if I am taking time off to enjoy socializing or just working on my, you know, well-being, I'll always have a small layer of, I wouldn't say stress, but there's always going to be art on the back of my mind and I'm always going to be worrying about it or, you know, kind of thinking about what I should paint next or thinking about the deadlines I'm, I have coming up. So it's a blessing and a curse for sure, but it's something that I think is so worth it. And it's just, I guess, kind of one of the many traits of being self-employed and being in the creative profession. And it's something that I'm so grateful for every day and something that I wouldn't trade for anything else. So yeah, that about wraps up my video. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And um, the original for this piece has already been sold, but she will be still available to view at my solo show. So if you guys want to come check her out in person, again, the information is in the description below. I also have prints of her available at my website at happyd-artist.com if you're interested in getting a print. And I hope you guys have a lovely day. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time. Bye.